Okay, so we are going to be taking some flip video notes on topographic maps and satellite maps. So what is a topographic map? Well, a topographic map is a map that shows and connects all points of the same elevation to form a picture of land. So below, this is a picture of a topographic map of Austin, Texas, our capital. Now you still need to keep in mind that it is a map, so this blue, is showing the Colorado River. All blue will always represent water. Um, these black lines are showing streets and roads, and then this line with the little um, cross system is a railroad. The little dots are buildings. But the main point of a topographic map is to show elevation. And so all these brown lines are what we call contour lines. And every contour line shows equal elevation. So real quick, I want you to pause the video and take a second and look at the elevation of Austin. Notice how over here on the northwest, there are very many, many, many contour lines and they're extremely close together. And then completely go diagonal over here to the southeast and there's hardly any contour lines. So what do you think that's telling us about the elevation of that area? So what is the purpose? Topographic maps are made to show natural or man-made features of land. At the top, this is what we call a profile, seeing something from the side. So I can see that there's a sand dune right here that completely drops off probably from weathering and erosion. And then there's another hill over here and then a cliff that drops off right here with a little bay in the ocean. If I go down to the topographic map, I'm seeing the same thing, but it's like from a top view. And we know, especially from GTT, that when we look at a top view, you really can't see depth or elevation. So that's where the contour lines come into play. Now, I know that this happens to actually be um, the ocean because if I look at my interval, I see that my contour interval goes up by 20, meaning this line must be zero elevation, telling me that this is at sea level. So if we look at the profile, see how quickly the elevation changes? The elevation is dropping at a very rapid rate. Now look at how the lines are. They're extremely close together. When you are looking at a contour map, here is a rule of thumb and write this down. The closer the contour lines are, the steeper the elevation is. So the closer the contour lines are, the steeper the elevation, meaning the elevation is changing extremely quickly. The farther apart the contour lines are, the more gradual the elevation is changing. So it's not very steep. It's very gentle elevation change, very gradual. So who uses topographic maps? The military, miners, police, farmers, engineers, especially civil engineers, okay? Um, if you're planning a hike, you might want to know which way that you're not going to drop off the edge of a cliff. Landscaping, building homes, building bridges, building roads. Okay, so let's talk about a contour line and a contour interval. We kind of went over that a little bit today when you did your Plato Mountain. So again, up here we have the profile, and then we have the topographic map that goes through it. I like this picture because it's kind of showing you the many different types of contour lines. So we have our contour line, which again is showing equal elevation. So it's like if I run my arrow all along this line, then I am staying at the exact same elevation. Contour interval is going to be the space in between two lines. So this is where I'm showing the elevation is changing. And then an index contour is what we call a contour line that actually has the elevation written in it. So this 100 is telling me that this line is representing 100, might be feet, might be meters, above sea level. And then this one is 200. Now, as you can imagine, we don't put a number on every single line because that can get really cluttered and confusing. So we just skip every other one and only do the index contour. So let me ask you, what is the contour interval of this map? Notice if from 100 
to 200, that is 100 feet different, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lines, then 100 feet divided by 10 would make it 10. So to double check to make sure I'm right, I could say 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 60, 170, 180, 190, 120. So that proves that 10 feet is my contour interval. So I want you to look at this map here, but let's first write the definition of a contour interval. Contour intervals connect all the points on the map that have the same elevation. Okay. So if we look at this map here, I go from 50, 75, 100 to 125. What would you predict the contour interval is? It is 25. Noticing that if I was to walk from this line to here, I have increased my elevation by 25. Again, maybe feet, maybe meters. So let's test our knowledge. First, let's figure out the contour interval. Looking at our contour index, if this is 500 and this is 600, and I have one, two, three, four, five lines, take 100 and divide it by five. And that means the interval is 20 feet. So now I want you to tell me what do you believe the elevation is for A right here. Go ahead and write that down. And then tell me what do you think the elevation for B is. Pause the video and figure out these two. So if this is 500 and the contour interval is 20, then that means 520, 540, 560, 580. So the elevation for A is 540 feet and the elevation for B is 580 feet. So what about hatch marks? Hatch marks are always going to show areas of depression. So let's think of a crater, for example. Okay, so our elevation is increasing and now all of a sudden it's going to start decreasing because we have a depression. That is going to be shown just like a contour line. However, it's going to put these little hatch marks inside. Now, the interval is not going to change. So let's look at this picture down here. We know our contour interval is 20. Okay, so they tell me this is an ocean, so this must be 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And I can see that contour index right there tells me that's accurate. So if this is 100, that means this is 120, this is 140. So what is the elevation of this line right here with the hatch marks inside it? Well, the interval doesn't change, but when I see that, I know it's a depression. So if this is, sorry, I need my mouse. If this is 120, 140, this must be, go back down to 120. So you still keep with the same interval. You just decrease when you see that. Now do not con uh, confuse that with this railroad symbol going through here. So if I was to look at this map, I see the river, and I also see like one, two, three, four hills. And I know they're hills because just like a mountain, a hill does get have a smaller area as it increases in elevation, noticing that the circles do get smaller. So let's talk about the effects that water has on contour lines. Rivers are always going to be represented when contour lines bend. So if you look at this stream right here on the Mill River, okay, all rivers lead into the ocean, notice how the contour lines start to kind of make this V shape. So write that down. Rivers are going to create a V shape, and put that in parentheses, when they cross a contour line. And the reason is, is because of weathering and erosion. Now remember, weathering is the breaking down of something, and erosion is the movement. So as this running water is washing through the land, it is breaking some of it down and taking it with it into the ocean. And that is going to have an effect on the elevation. And so as you see, the contour lines create this V shape, the point of the V is always going to point upstream. And the wide part of the V, like the mouth, is always going to point downstream. So if north was at the top of the page, I want you to tell me which direction the river is flowing. 
So let's look at this con uh, topographic map. Notice how you can definitely see the V shape. The V's happen to be upside down in this one, but that's okay. So we know that the point of the V is always going to point upstream. Well, this question is asking which way is the river flowing? So if the river is flowing opposite of upstream, that must be downstream. So that means it is flowing south. So this river is flowing from the north to the south. Now what else would help me figure that out is water's not going to go uphill. Water is going to go with the force of gravity. And I can see that if this has an elevation of 300 and this has an elevation of 200, then as I'm going down and moving south, the elevation is decreasing. So therefore water is going to be flowing that direction. So can a river flow north? It's a big misconception. No river can ever flow north. That is incorrect. Yes, a river can flow north. And in fact, one of the biggest rivers in the world does so. So let's name two ways that you can determine which way a river flows on a topographic map. Kind of answered that. Remember the contour lines, that V, the point, points upstream. And rivers do always flow downhill. So these are the two ways that you can always determine which way water is flowing on a topographic map. So pause that and write that down. Put big stars around it. All right, so let's test our knowledge. Okay, we have two hills. We have Abel here and Baker. Approximately how tall is Abel Hill? Which mountain is taller and by how much? How many meters of elevation are there between the contour lines on the topographic map? Pretty much that's a fancy way of saying is what is the interval? And which mountain has steeper slopes? And are the contour lines closer together on Abel or Baker? So go ahead and pause the video and answer these questions. And do label them in your video 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, so let's check your answers. Abel Hill is probably, and this is where, guys, this is a guesstimation. So if you didn't get 42, that's okay. But you should know by looking at Abel Hill, it is definitely over 40. Now looking at the uh, topographic map, I can see that this is 40, but I don't see the peak. So that lets me know that it is more than 40, but less than 50. And the reason I know it's less than 50 is because it tells me my contour interval is 10 meters. So if this hill was high enough to hit 50, I would have a contour line. Which one is taller? Baker. That's easy. By how much? Well, almost 10. How many meters? What is a, a topographic interval? 10, 10, 20, 30, 40. Which one is steeper? So that goes back to looking at it. Remember, to figure out steepness, the closer the contour lines are, the steeper the hill. So even though Baker has this really gradual part right here, on the south side, it is extremely steep. So, tomorrow, or I'm sorry, Monday, when you come to class, the first thing I'm going to do after a warm-up is to check this. I want you to match the contour map to the profiles on the right. So in your journal, um, at the end of your flip notes, I want you to number one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I want you to write A, B, C, D, E, or F. Okay, so really stare at these, look at the profile, look at the topographic map, and match them together. Okay, and y'all have a great weekend.